Hey you guys, I wanted to talk about this really cool book called World Religions, The Great Faiths Explored and Explained by John Bowker. I found it for 75 cents at McKay's. I'm going to be incorporating this into our world culture, world history, however you want to word it, uh, curriculum this year. Everybody's wrapping up the 2021 school year and people are starting to ask questions on how to piece together curriculum for next year. So, this is a big book. It's a very big book. Um, it has a fantastic index pages, um, section and table of contents, and even for the reading suggestions, it goes over ancient religions, including Greek religions, Roman, Norse, Celtic. It goes over Hinduism, Jainism, Shikhiism, Buddhism, Chinese religions, Japanese religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and native religions. And some of them, it gets really into... Um, including Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity and Islam. Okay, so uh, there we have the Zeus King of the Gods and the Sun God Apollo. So how would I do this for a re um, for a religion? <laughs> Sorry. I've only had like two sips of coffee. How would I do this for a curricula? Oh, look. It's Mithra Slays the Bull. Um... So, let's just say you wanted to put this in with your uh, world history. Oh, look, it's the Tree of Life. What what I am planning on doing, I don't know if we're going to hit this really hard for a quarter of the year yet, or if I'm going to spread it out through maybe half the year. But when you're doing world religion, uh, not world religion, uh, world history, this stuff is going to come up throughout anyway. So, you have to decide, do you want to hit heavy every day um or do you want it to learn a little bit about it maybe do this the first quarter and then when you get into maybe some other stuff that you're into it'll be revisited this entire book has about 189 pages of learning and with 180 days of the school year I mean you know technically you could do like a page or so a day but I think I would do it I think we're going to do the first quarter. So could we get 45 days worth of learning without losing our minds with 189 pages of learning? So say we hit Hinduism. Uh, it's, it's the first in-depth uh, religion in this book. So, oh, it's the mother goddess. There, whew, there, there are some on-fire women goddesses, let me tell you, <laughs> in the Hindu religion. But maybe Roman numeral uh, would be Hindu, right, or Hinduism. And you could either break it up by each section, like every two pages is a section, and they could do Roman numerals from there, and then do an illustration of their favorite image of the day. Or maybe they could do it like a week-long project, or they could go into the sub-sections and that be the main title and the Roman numerals go down from there. What I do when I give my daughter books like this is I actually go in sometimes and write the Roman numerals where I want them and let her do the A, B, C, D after that. Learning about other religions and cultures is really good, especially when your kid is trying to make friends. We have had Hindu friends when my daughter was elementary school and we had to leave one school where she'd been bullied a lot. She made a lot of Hindu friends and she already knew all about Ganesha and Shiva. Um, she had a lot of respect for it as well. So, oh look, this was the section of the video I recorded that I could not find. <laughs> this is the beginning of the book and it shows this beautiful, fabulous index. Let me tell you, the bad about this book is the sheen is really high. Sorry about that. But look, there's all, there's all the index. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Oops. I, I've been working on this for a while this morning. I'm not going back. It's by, This book is by DK. Um, we've, we've done a lot of DK books. The bad thing about DK is that, like, say you're Christian, sometimes they'll use terms like, oh, the Christians believe in fables such as. They might use terminology like that, and it might be offensive to some people, but they do that with all of the denominations. This is a monk's headdress. Beautiful, beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful art in here that is actually where a lot of tattoos are inspired. So if you ever see a really crazy looking tiger tattoo, so we're, this is still in Hinduism that uh, talks about gurus. 
but the video skipped around because I accidentally got my sequencing out of order. These are the mudras. This is cool. This is not even close to all of them. There's a whole poster that you can buy. Uh, you could practice that in the chakras. So the next section is Jainism, and maybe if you want to do Jainism for one week, you could do four pages on Monday, and on Tuesday they could illustrate, four pages on Wednesday, four pages on Thursday, and on Friday they can illustrate. Maybe on Friday they could even do a painting, and that can be incorporated into art. Um, so these are the different subtopics within the main topic. We call them paragraphs. Maybe they'll want to replicate some of the actual art of Jainism. These would be beautiful to replicate. On a day like this, maybe do the title and label who the five supreme beings are, or this is an embroidered Siddha Chakra, and there's a lot of these where there's a huge image and there's a whole list all the way around it. Maybe they could just label the dark writing, you know, like uh, the head of an order, etc. List them, like in this one there's 13. Maybe they could find their favorite one and either write the whole thing out or explain it or talk about it. And maybe illustrate what pops in their head when they think about that. So say they did all that on Monday. Now Tuesday maybe will be the illustration day. But now we're on Wednesday. So they're going to uh, take some notes on the life of Mahavira. Okay. Here's another image with a bunch of sections around it. Maybe they can list all the dark writing uh, in the list and then go back and explain their favorite. Okay, maybe they want to try to replicate uh, this scripture. Maybe they want to illustrate Mahavira and Indra, or here with the, the mother and child. Maybe that's what they want to illustrate. Maybe they want to hold off and do that on Friday. They'll do all the notes today and maybe do their illustration at the end of the week. Uh, cosmology of Jainism. Okay, and again, here we have a main... Now, now I'm going to tell, tell you what my kid might do. My kid, even though this is beautiful and you would think, oh, that would be great to paint. She might list all what we call the dark letters. You know, you just you end up with your terminology on how you do this kind of stuff. So it's the, see the dark letters, like the levels of rebirth, etc. And then she'll, after she illustrates, she'll go and pick her favorite one. She'll copy work her favorite section. Is she going to paint that big, beautiful thing? No, she's probably going to come down here and paint... Uh, I can't even pronounce this, and the salt of the ocean. It's beautiful, uh, but that's what, she would take the easy way, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, uh, asymed, aset, I can't say this. Asceticism, that could be a spelling word. So here maybe they might want to list the things like the great vows, which is nonviolence, not lying, not taking what has not been given to them, abandonment of sexual relations, and non-possession, and this is going to be what my kid would illustrate would be this pot down here at the bottom talking about that. This is the last section on this is the temple and image worship and this beautiful, oh my goodness, down here, the Jain temple in Calcutta. You know, maybe y'all might even make a 3D replica, who knows? My daughter would of course draw the feet, but you know, again, they have a bunch of um, explanations around the temple anyway, and they could tell what the favorite one is. There's a lot of ways to do this. Let them do what they want to do. So, uh, then there's Buddhism, and it continues on like this, and Buddhism is huge. Anyway, um, how do we do tests? We don't. We are plugged in through an umbrella program. We're protected under, I think, religious, I think, I don't know. We're not connected to the public school system. But what I will do, say we do all of this in the first quarter next year. At the end of the quarter, I will have her do what I call a final, very similar to how college finals are where they just kind of tell you what to do and you do it. I'll probably have her pick her favorite three and her favorite three things or something. Give me who, what, when, where, why. We do this a lot. And I do this for every single subject. That's how we do finals. Tell me what you learned. I don't care about what you didn't learn. Uh, I, I don't mind knowing about what you didn't like. That's, you know, interesting. But uh, we focus on what did we learn so that when we are done with the year and done with subjects and curriculum, we feel like we walked away with information, okay? So for other than that, I'm going to kick back. I'm going to flip through the book. It's Saturday, and we have tree cutters here. So um, uh, anyway, so be blessed and be a blessing. Bye. Bye.
く。